Hey, welcome back. This is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. How are you guys doing today? Hey, I promised you guys another defensive uh, play calling uh, game where I go through uh, calling uh, my uh, 62 uh, multi-8 youth football defense uh, and everything that we do here. This is a playoff game uh, back in uh, spring of 2016. Uh, it's a team. The reason I chose this team is somebody's asking me about pass coverage, and kind of what we do. This team goes into the spread a lot, uh, and also has some run formations. So we're moving in and out of different things. Uh, some of you guys at younger ages probably won't be moving out in and out of this one defense. Uh, we actually move into a, the 43. Uh, so, uh, in, out of the six, two and some other things. So, uh, uh, you may not, this video may be a little bit higher uh, level than you're looking for right now. But uh, at least you can look at it and maybe gain some experience out of it and maybe a couple of tidbits that works for your team. But anyway, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, here we go. This is just a quick introduction phase. The first play looks like we're in the, a 6-2. Right here, I'd say the linebackers may be, uh, this is 6-2 wide tackle. Looks like the linebackers might be a little bit deeper than I like, but because there's two tight ends, the corners are kind of playing this angle C gap thing to help with contain. They should be watching the uh, the wing and the tight ends here. And uh, we got uh, two really good uh, defensive ends, uh, two extremely good uh, D tackles, uh, big nose guard. I think we've got a weaker player in the other A gap and two pretty good linebackers and uh, two very experienced corners. Uh, they're not speed demons, but they're very experienced, uh, both with run and pass coverage. And I think there's a free safety uh, back there. I wish the film would show that. But anyway, here we go. I think they try to run a sweep to the wide side. And uh, my main D end uh, says, nope, that's not going to happen right there. He plays a little tighter than I like. Uh, he needs to be coming a little bit higher. Uh, one to two yards behind that deepest back. He gets burned a couple of times in, in some of the games, but uh, he is our tailback. He's very, very fast. Uh, I let him play that way and keep uh, keep dagging on him to make sure he's got his proper angle there. Uh, so that was a good play. Nice big loss there on that. Uh, they're still in this uh, kind of pistol-looking thing here. It looks like we're still in the 6-2 wide tackle. Uh, not really worried about it. As you can see, I have flipped my defensive tackle and D-end. Uh, they're playing wide side along with my rover linebacker. They're playing wide side of the field. Uh, let's see which, uh, what they're going to try to do here. So we're uh, definitely the 6-2 wide tackle again. D-end's going to come up, tips the ball. I had a linebacker in the corner sitting right on. Okay, so here's where they're... They like to they like to pull out they like to throw and they're coming out in a full blown spread. Uh, looks like um, one of my players is going to the total opposite there. But uh, what happened was is the two inside linebackers uh, now become uh, what definitely outside linebackers. They have the number two man. Uh, the corners have number one man. I've got a really good D tackle who's actually like a linebacker, and you can see he just dropped uh, back into a linebacker there. Uh, one of the uh, A gappers is now is supposed to be over here on this uh, trips guy jamming him, and he hasn't read the play and doesn't know what he's doing. He's running around. So I got I got two linemen and two D ends here. The D tackle is plopped back, uh, and then I've got uh, two two outside linebackers here that are playing the number two guys, and uh, two corners. I've got a safety back here, and this 14 guy should be over here to jam this uh, for a front guy here, but he hasn't done that, and he's running around. He'll, I think he actually goes opposite motion. Uh, let's see what happens here. Yeah, he didn't know where he's at. And we tip the ball here by the big tackle. And always, you can see the D-end and the D-tackle were in there. And that's the reason uh, I went to this 4-3 with this group is the, the, best, the best pass 
coverage is your pass rush, and uh, they didn't really have the blockers to deal with us, and so uh, we were really coming hard on the pass rush there, and that worked out there for us, even though we had that one guy running around there. But uh, that's okay. Uh, we still had the safety over the top. Uh, let's see, they're back in this pistol thing. I think when we're, I told them when we're in this, we're, uh, we're going to head to this 6-2 uh, wide tackle. This linebacker here is still deep. He is the rover. He is faster than this one. Uh, that's kind of okay, but I wish he'd be a little bit. I wish it would be about right here, actually, to be honest with you. We're in the 6-2 wide tackle. It's fourth and long. Uh, I think they actually punt here, and, uh, yeah, we almost, we almost block it. But he, and he pooches it up. I'm yelling, uh, can't hear it, but I'm yelling everybody to get away. So that was the first series. Pretty happy with that. Here they come out in this big, uh, this big spread again. You can see what happens here. D tackle comes back. The A gappers now coming up here. The two outside linebackers have the number two guys. Uh, corners have the number one guy from the side. And this is from the sideline. Corners have the first guy from the sideline. In this 4-3, uh, the linebackers uh, for, for this formation will have the backside guy here, which is kind of the number three over here, but uh, he's off the line because I'm jamming with this uh, A-gapper here, this guy, so the linebacker takes the other guy here, and I've got a free safety back here. I still have two DNs that are really good and two huge defensive tackles, and this D-tackle is actually, uh, he's just big. He's one of the fastest kids on the team. So he moves back into this middle linebacker position, and that's really, um, if I had all the right talent, probably where he would be playing all, all season anyway. But uh, since he's so big, he was playing D-tackle. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what we got on this. Uh, we shot back in to cover their spread. See, he's telling the guy he wants him over the over the A gap there because our D. See how fast our D guys are coming out. Looks like you're trying to run underneath here. That 14 should have jammed a little bit better. 10 is reading what's going on here. They try to throw an underneath pass, but I've got three guys around this right here. And so I'm pretty happy with that coverage. Not too bad there. So they're back in the pistol. So I'm back in the 6-2 wide tackle. We're just, uh, that's pretty much their running formation. So we know what's going on there. He tried to come out. He's going to try to pass it again. I think we almost tip it. We miss him. And then we intercept here. So a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Uh, and that's what my defense is all about. I try to put a ton of pressure on youth football quarterbacks and not let them do too much in the uh, in the backfield. Uh, I see a lot of youth football teams kind of letting re have reading linebackers, their DN set back. They're not they're not putting a lot of pressure on the backfield on the quarterback. So they're letting that ball get off to be able to get downfield. I don't believe in that. I want to attack, attack, attack to make sure that uh, the quarterback never feels comfortable. He's always having to uh, to move. Uh, and the, the backs, uh, you know, it, they're always having to make a cut before they actually hit the line of scrimmage. And so that's our philosophy, is to penetrate the offensive backfield so they have to, so they have to move uh, before they actually get to the line of scrimmage, which slows them down, which allows us to do a lot of good things. So that was good. We got us a pick six on that. Uh, so this is the third series, and I think we're up 14 now. This is a good team. Uh, this is a playoff, and we're, we, we have just really perfected what we were doing this season. And uh, I think we're undefeated still, and I think this team has only lost one game. So we're in a 6-2 wide tackle again because they're in a – looks like they're double wing here. And let's see what happens. I think they try to run inside, and, uh, yeah, you're not going to run inside with our big guys and like that. Uh, so they come out in the spread again. So you can see we've hit this 4-3. The guy comes up here, takes his jam. We've got two guys here, two guys over there. we got a safety back here in that middle linebacker. And so if you guys are wondering how I deal with the spread, uh, and this these guys pass quite a bit and are pretty good with it if you – allow them to, this is how I deal with the spread, is this uh, 43 thing here that I've got going on. 
So here we go. Let's see what we got. Linebacker, middle linebacker decides to go, and he crushes that with the uh, D tackle there. So uh, pretty good play. Pretty good read by the middle linebacker and the D tackle. So let's see what we've got here. He's trying to find. Yep, yeah, we got another. Let's look. Uh, yep, yeah, we got another guy in. We don't really know what we're doing with the motion, but uh, the DN, if you saw that, almost picked that off and went to town with it. And I was really depressed about that play. Uh, and you can see him right here. We've been practicing that, that little swing pass they do, and there he is. He's got it intercepted here, and we just missed it, even though we've got this guy kind of out of motion. And sometimes that happens. You know, some, you know you've got that weaker player in the A-gap sometimes, or a guy that doesn't really know pass coverage because you don't really we don't really see the spread a whole lot and so it's not like we play the sp spread team every game uh, at least in our league so we're so when we do play spread teams there you know we have to it's kind of like that week as we're kind of learning something a little bit newer so uh, it's not surprising that some of the even experienced guys are out of position sometimes, but that's a lineman trying to do a D back thing. Sometimes that happens there, but uh, you know, it all worked out. We got an offsides penalty and we almost had a pick six. I actually would have rather the pick six there because he wanted it. And there he goes. You can see he wants it too. Um, but uh, this, the reason we know that is, uh, you know, uh, I, d defensively, we scout quite a bit. We get the film from the teams because our league films everybody. Uh, and uh, we really do a heavy scouting. Uh, and we know plays pretty much what's going to run. And so I definitely believe in that. If you've got the opportunity to scout and look at tendencies, definitely do that. So we're still, they're back out in the spread. Uh, I don't know why they're still in the spread. It's not really working. But they, they, they are committed to it, so good for them. So we're still, we come back into this 4-3 again. They're going to make this throw. They get it off. Linebackers there. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, he didn't get very many yards. It's fourth and 10 still. Uh, and they're going to come out. I don't know if they're, they're going to try to punt again, but they're in sort of a, sort of this pistol thing they've run out of before. But he definitely punts. We almost block it again. Decent punt gets a good roll. That's okay. I, you know, we usually don't like to have a punt return because we don't want to uh, fumble the ball. But that was a good punt. Uh, that kind of put us in a bind offensively. But I think we uh, get out of that really quick. Okay, so they don't really go into a spread here, uh, or they do, but I don't think I come out of it. Uh, yeah, we're yelling. The, the middle linebacker is trying to yell at everybody to to get it covered. I don't think we totally get it covered, and he just we just set in, and the guy runs a wedge, and that's okay because I think we made a good mistake there because we didn't get we didn't get out of our six two, uh, and uh, he tried to run up the middle, so that worked out, and uh, of course, well, better to be lucky sometimes. So now they're coming out in the full spread. I think I knew if they were under center, we did not go out, and that's probably what happened there. Uh, I think that's why the majority of people weren't trying to move, so that was probably a good call by the lineman because he was under center. And I, Yeah, that's right. We knew if it was a spread and he was under center, he'd try to run a sneak, so uh, those linemen didn't pull out of there, so that was good on their part. So here we are. We're back in the spread. This guy's trying to figure out where he's going to go. Uh, and he doesn't really know because he's got a. He, he should be in the middle uh, and not spread out because he's got a back out here. He's not a lone quarterback, and that's what the other linebacker is trying to tell him. Um, and we, he makes a good throw there, and uh, he misses it because we had him running back there. So again, that's pretty good. Let's see here. We got okay. So here we got we got the three. We got the one. We got the jammer. We're still in this. We come back to this forty-one, this uh, forty-three kind of setup we've got here. Let's see what we got. He's going to try to throw the ball again, and he goes up the middle, and they crush the two big tackles, crushing. So there we go. And so what down is it? So this fourth down. Looks like they're going to try to come back out in the spread again. So we we move out of the six-two wide tackle. Our jammer goes out there, gets on the middle guy, and here we go. Let's see what he tries to get off. 
We come around, we take him too long. He gets a good throw, and we've totally uh, botched that coverage. Uh, so, it's, uh, yeah, they got a good playoff there. Um, so here we go. We're moving back into the uh, 43 again. Kind of giving him too much time. We just miss him. They get another good playoff. All right, so they've stuck with it. I think we're up about 22 to 0 right here. But uh, we move back into the 40, uh, 43 again. And they're running. DN comes up and then uh, does what he's supposed to, turns them into the two big D tackles and linebacker there. And you can see we're up 20 to nothing. Here we are in the spread again. I think the DNs aren't getting there quick enough, so uh, hopefully we uh, we get here this time. So here we come. Yeah, we got, oh, we almost got him, ball tips, and uh, not too bad there. So a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Receiver might have might have caught that, but uh, I'm okay with that. We did get a ton of pressure on the quarterback. Didn't happen. Here we go again. Quarterback tries to run up, and three big three big guys just crush him again on fourth down, and so that's it. Had a couple of good plays out of that. You know that's going to happen. Uh, oh, how did I get some offense in here? Oh, got a little offense in there. Let's move ahead. Okay, so this is maybe the fifth series. I think we're up about 28 to nothing now. They come back out in this spread, so you can see what we're doing again. Uh, I guess you guys want, if you guys want to see the whole video here, uh, let's see what we got. So now we're chasing him. And, uh, yeah, I think we hurt the quarterback on one of the last plays, and so they've got a second string guy in there. As you can see, we're just not going to give them a lot of time to get to get the ball off. So now they're coming into kind of a double wing thing, so we're back in the 6-2 wide tackle. Uh, and you can see how we go in and out of these fronts. I mean, that's, that's kind of my gig. That's the multiple in the 6-2 multi-8 is uh, we're coming in and out of these defensive fronts, depending on uh, what our scouting report says for the for the formation uh, of the offense, because we excuse me, because we want to put our guys in the best places uh, to make plays. So he runs D tackle. Well, that's a DN crushes it, which is what he's supposed to do if the kid runs outside. Uh, so they come out in the spread again. You see, we we block back into our forty three. And we're ready to go. And th this is, you know, this is this is why a lot of defenses. I know why I had to go to this. Uh, about 2010, I was playing select, and I'm in a 6-2 wide tackle, running some base 6-2 stuff. And teams come out in the spread in uh, in playoffs, and I, I get ripped. Uh, the 6-2 is really good for a running defense, but if a spread comes out and you're sitting in a 6-2 and you don't adjust into something else, uh, a spread will shred you. So uh, that's the reason you've got to be multiple uh, uh, with with your defenses or at least think that way to make some adjustments because uh, you just can't sit in the same defense if the offense decides, hey, we have another formation that can rip up the 6-2. So uh, I finally figured that out, and uh, we put this, uh, we put some uh, spread defenses in to make sure we can handle that. So here we go. You see the pressure. Uh, we almost let him go, but we're just not going to give him time. And that's the attack mentality we have on defense. I mean, we want to attack, and uh, that's what we're going to do. As you can see, we do this again. They buck. They make a good bucket step on the backside, but. Uh, the other side, we crush him with the D tackle. So they're still staying in this spread. Um, so we're, we backed up in this 43 again. And they're going to try to make a throw over the middle. And free safety was sitting there ready for that to happen. And that's the reason, you know, I went to this 4-3 versus this 5-2 on really heavy passing teams. Is that that 4-3 gives me that safety over the top back there 
uh, if they're totally spread out and uh, versus like a, what a 5-2 or a 5-3 can do. Uh, and so I like on um, really good, and this is a really good passing team. They've shred up some teams that weren't as good as us. Uh, you've got that safety sitting back there to make that to make that read, and we almost got us up. And he's unhappy because he knew he had probably a pick six on that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we've, we've backed up again into the 4-3 because they're passing, and we were ready for that too, so that didn't, that didn't happen there. Um, and on this, I think we're in the 4-3, and the linebacker makes a pretty good play on that and decides he's going to run up the middle and crushes, absolutely crushes the quarterback on that. Uh, so that was that was awesome because we tell the linebackers if you see a gap open up and you can make it and that kid's got just just take it uh, especially if you've got a kid with that speed if if he sees green and daylight right to the quarterback uh, go for it and then here we go here so these guys are just getting crushed uh, in this playoff game and once again like I said this is a good team they 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 played well all season we've just been uh, we've been practicing this spread defense for another team and them and it's finally kind of all come together pretty close it looks like I've got some uh, some backups in now let's see what they get off uh, we're all over the coverage there uh, so once again so somebody asked this you know from the sideline usually our cornerback We'll have the number one man if uh, we're not spread out into a 4-3 and we're still in a 6-2. The free safety or Fred will have the number two man. Uh, if we go into a 5-2 or 5-3 monster, uh, one of the other linebackers will have a number two man. Uh, and then uh, if we go into that 4-3, it really depends on what we want to do, how we'll handle the uh, outside linebackers, in that rover uh, gunner uh, a gap guy that comes out as another D back if he's going to take two or three on the trip side it's just really what you and I like to have that gunner be a jammer and so it's really really matters who who's ever on the who's ever uh, usually the two or three guy the gunner will have two and the linebacker will have three depending on if they're on this on or off the line there but the corner will always have the first guy from the sideline if that makes sense there. Uh, so let's see what they've got in here. Uh, looks like I put some offense back here and didn't delete these scenes. Oh, but uh, we go right back into defense here. So this is like one of the last series here. Looks like we're... Uh, it looks like we're in the 4-3 just to play a 4-3 with that that one line i think that one gunner wanted to play a linebacker so i said okay we'll just uh play 4-3 with you in the middle there so uh i think that's what's going on uh right now we're i think we're up about 45 points or something we're just uh we're sitting in let's see yeah we're sit oh i think we're sitting in a 5-3 so that's what's going on uh and really this game this game's pretty much over uh, so yeah, we let's head to the end here. So, uh, so yeah, that was a that was a game where that was a spread team, a really pretty good spread team. We were moving uh, out of the six two wide tackle into that uh, forty three the most of the time when they went into like a trips and a double spread. Uh, there at the end, I think we we're sitting in a five three just to. They, they had their second string quarterback in and nothing was really going on. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty much blitzing the DNs all the time, so I don't really blitz a whole lot uh, anymore. I used to do that when I was younger. Uh, if I'm going to do some blitzing, I'll usually call, call move into a stack or something, but uh, or I'll blitz now and then. But uh, with older, better teams, uh, when I blitz, I make sure that I know that I know that that play is going to occur before I blitz. I don't blitz just to blitz anymore like I used to do. Because uh, if you kind of, I got, I actually blitzed to blitz the other day, uh, 
about six months ago and almost got scored on. So be careful of blitzing just to blitz. But, uh, but again, hey, I hope you enjoyed this uh, play calling game strategy. It wasn't the most exciting, but it did show you how to move from a 6-2 wide tackle into a 43 defense really quick and how that can work. So for some of you that have that, have that and want to be able to do that, there you go. Also talked a little bit about uh, the corners always have the first guy from the sideline. Uh, if you're not running, a tr if you're still in the 6-2, the Fred will have the number two. Uh, the, the linebacker will look for the other tight end. If you move into a 5-2 or a 5-3, your Fred and Rover will have the number two guy. Cornerback still have the one guy from the sideline. If you move into that 5-3, uh, then your linebackers may have number two or three, depending on how you're going to play uh, your uh, other D back there, kind of uh, your rover back. So, so that's some of that there. Uh, again, hope you enjoyed the, the video. This is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. Uh, if uh, you'd like to purchase my book, the 6-2 Multi-8 Youth Football Defense, which is what I was running in the video, you can head over to CoachParker.org and do so. It's $24.99. I also have an offensive book out right now, the Power Wing Beast Offense Playbook for Youth Football that uh, has about uh, 60 plays. About 30 of them are beast and 30 of them are, are other traditional offenses uh, like uh, Offset Eye, Double Wing, and uh, Power Eye variations. So, uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, again, this is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. I uh, hope you guys had uh, are having a good day. Uh, remember to play for fun, and winning is funner. And I'll see you guys later. Ciao.